Hello, Mr. Smith from Australia. Great to have you here. We will start in a in a jiffy as soon as I clean my eyes. Ooh, what a close-up shot. Uh, okay. And today we're going to be talking about the Turkish economy, which still exists, by the way. Uh, and lower the head, lower the head, they tell me. Always lower the head and center yourself. Uh, as you know, the world economy is in a recession and the concern is it may turn into a great recession or depression. Even worse than 2008 great financial crises prognosticates IMF had Jo Kristalina Georgiova, I believe, and I, my apologies to the dear lady if I mispronounced her name. And the whole idea is that rich countries have the resources to more or less rescue their economies or mitigate most of the damage, uh, but uh, Poorer countries, of course, have fewer resources, less access to global credit markets. And most importantly, unlike Fed or the European Central Bank, they can't print money, which is global reserve currency. So the damage is going to be more pronounced in developing nations. And Turkey happens to be one of that. So, okay, here we are. It's exactly 3 p.m. Istanbul time. And I am starting the broadcast for Real Turkey Channel. My name is Atilla Yeshilada. I am going to talk about the Turkish economy today in the context of the COVID-19 outbreak and how much damage it is costing the Turkish economy. This part is simple. Uh, we have not complete, but sufficient data to estimate what's going to happen in the second quarter of the year. But of course, uh, being the great futurologist I am, I don't know what this means, but it sounds so good, a futurologist. I shall try to generate predictions for the rest of the year, as well as for 2021. And what really vexes me is whether we can spare 2021. Now, of course, uh, the economic damage is commensurate or parallel to the length and the severity of the outbreak. As of yesterday, Turkish corona cases bordered on 40,000. We have few deaths thanks to Odin and other gods I worship. Uh, but uh, for the health service, what matters is the number of patients that they need to take care of. Uh, if you look at the number of cases over time, they still show exponential growth, despite ever uh, strengthening restriction imposed on social mobility. And in fact, uh, curfews for people over 65 or under 20 and intercity travel, except for uh, essential goods and services. Now, Turkey's economy is largely based on small and medium-sized enterprises and heavily dominated by service industries. Roughly 60% of the national output comes from services. And clearly, uh, these companies are not making any sales because even though there is no national curfew, there is a very strong recommendation for everyone to stay home unless it's very urgent for them to go out. There is not 100% compliance, but checking the TV channels, uh, most of the people do abide by the regulations, minimizing social and using E-Trade uh, to do their shopping. But of course, E-Trade in Turkey is very minuscule compared to European countries or North America. And even though it's booming, it's not going to make up 
for the closure of most shopping centers or the high streets, as I think Americans call them, uh, where most of the ritzy stores are, or our famous open bazaars, where everything from underpants for men and women to rice and Turkish feta cheese are sold. Okay, so much for introduction. Let's look at the damage. Uh, in March, uh, we look at the PMI indicators. There is one for manufacturing industry, which sunk by four points uh, and declined to 48. If you make a comparison between the current level of PMI and GDP growth, you would I would see GDP growth has already declined to zero percent by the end of uh, by the end of the first quarter. There is another one, lesser known but more comprehensive PMI survey, which contains service industry information as well, uh, collected by Musiad, uh, the Conservative Business Association, which slumped by 10 percentage points, reaching its nadir since 2013. That definitely spells recession. Exports in March declined by 15% while imports held up. Um, the, there is a survey by prestigious and rather independent think tank, TEPAO, which shows consumption expenditures by credit card. And a lot of Turks use a lot of credit cards and payment card, charge cards, etc. declined by as much as 40% at the end of the March. And that's, you know, just, just starting. Uh, there is another survey by a combination of business associations which found that on average 50% of Turkish enterprises have registered turnover losses of 50% or more. So on average, the typical Turkish enterprise is operating with a 25% loss in monthly sales. So as far as I'm concerned, it doesn't take an economist to forecast that Turkey would experience a deep recession in the second quarter of the year. Every country will experience a deep recession at, you know, in the second quarter of the year. The question is the third quarter and beyond, and that depends on whether Turkey can control the outbreak by say May or at the latest by the beginning of June. I am not a medical expert, except the fact that I'm very good at self-medicating. Cheers. And um, opinions differ. Uh, members of the National Science and Health Commission usually express the view that uh, with uh, social isolation, the plateau of the cases will arrive sometime around mid-May. Uh, more independent doctors and medical authorities are not so sure we have it under control. I'm Again, I'm not you know, I'm a medical professional, but I understand something about statistics and virology because I closely followed the Black Plague in Europe. I was young then. It appears to me the virus is widely present in all Turkish provinces, and there are several vectors carrying it uh, to Turkey even now. Illegal migrants from Iran, Iraq, Idlib, is a time bomb about to explode. And we really can't stop the flow of seasonal workers, uh, which may carry the virus. So my view is it's really not guaranteed that this outbreak will end by May or June. I would make uh, my preparations for the bad case scenario of the summer months being lost as far as the economy goes. <clears throat> I'm sorry. That would obviously add to the damage because in summer, 
the Turkish economy is mostly driven by tourism, you know, external tourism as well as domestic tourism. Directly, tourism makes up 4% of Turkish GDP. But if you use input-output accounting and look at all the industries that provide inputs for tourism, the actual share of tourism and related activities may be as high as 15%. Moreover, I tried to find exact data on the number of people who are employed by the industry. Once again, there is a conceptual issue here, but the numbers are anywhere from 1 million directly to 2 million, including those who work in related industries. And there, even if we manage to wipe off this nasty virus, the world opinion is that people are not going to be very likely to leave their homes to go abroad. So Turkish tourism is going to be probably dormant over the summer. That means at least another 1 million job losses. And... Uh, According to another think tank, Betam, uh, job losses in the interim, that's from the second quarter to third quarter, could reach a couple of millions on top of the 4 million unemployed already coming from 2019. So let's say 8 million, 9 million unemployed people. And uh, the government is nearing a commitment to provide universal income to these people. The sums are small. I used to estimate that it would take roughly $4,000 for every unemployed household uh, per year. Now I am lowering this to 3000 But still, if you have 8 million unemployed households, that's $24 billion. Turkish budget is unable to find the wherewithal to make payments. In March, the cash budget deficit was 40 billion liras, which is a record. It's, you know, five, mil, five billion dollars or slightly less, but I don't want to convert. I just want to give you comparative magnitudes. Uh, so March is the month when the outbreak exploded, but the government expenditures had not fully started. So April and May are going to be even worse. Let's say monthly deficits of 60 billion. And unlike the federal government of the United States or the European nations, Turkish government cannot borrow as freely as the others, simply because Domestic lenders are commercial banks, which don't have the deposit base, and Turkey's international borrowing costs, because of its low credit rating, is extremely high. I think issuing a euro bond uh, would mean paying 8%, 9% dollar interest per annum. So, you know, Turkey is resorting to asset purchases, which is a fancy word. Uh, for those of us who are not uh, economists, who are not economists, it is money printing, essentially. And um, that's something that everyone does. You need to keep the economy liquid and help the government uh, make the expenditures uh, to keep consumption up, to help the unemployed people to survive. But unfortunately, as the experience with Fed QE demonstrated, money is fungible and the money you direct towards industries and the real sector of the economy usually ends up in financial markets. That explains a lot of the rally in S&P 500 since 2009. And the same thing is, hap same thing is happening in Turkey. But in Turkey, only a small portion of the seepage is directed towards the stock exchange, which is very small. A lot of it goes to the foreign exchange market. And Turkish Lira has already depreciated. 
it's being held up by stealth intervention and if it depreciates further uh, it will lead to a blow up in inflation uh, or uh, if the economy overheats turkish imports will go up all in all i am really not so sure that the economic impact of the coronavirus will end in the third quarter of 2020. Moreover, research from the international side demonstrates that going back to normal, even if this virus is completely wiped off, is a misnomer. There is not going to be a normal at least the economic life is going to be completely different in the sense that many companies, for instance, in the United States and Europe, would want to bring their supply chains closer home because they don't want to experience the problems they experienced in Asia. Private sector fixed investment has been weak since the great financial crisis. It's probably going to be deferred even further. The banks have exhausted most of their ammunition trying to lend to businesses to keep them afloat. There will be a period of retrenchment where they try to build up reserves, profits, and you know work out their bad loans. The governments, too, have uh, spent all of their abilities to stimulate their economies. Most importantly, Household spending behavior will change. It is difficult to reach precise conclusions, but probably the average household will save more in case more emergencies like that emerge and would uh, purchase different goods and services, probably more health insurance, more comprehensive health or life insurance would invest into home entertainment services, home improvement, I don't know, things like that. But I know that the from an expenditure side, that's consumption plus private fixed investment plus government stimulus, the world economy will not return to normal in 2020 and probably not in 2021. And that's my starting point. In Turkey, uh, the situation is even worse. Uh, if the world economy, in particular Europe, and Middle East is not returning to normal, we won't register an external growth. Our workforce uh, doesn't have enough education and long-term employment would further lead to deterioration of their skills. Turkey's private fixed investment to GDP ratio has declined by something like four percentage points. Excuse me if my numbers are wrong. I'm not trying to mislead you. It's just that I have Alzheimer's, which this is good for Alzheimer's. By the way, this is fruit juice, guys. You know, I'm trying to keep this uh, G-rated. Um, so if you have a year in which your capital stock is rusting and your labor force is losing its skills when you return to work full-time, full capacity in 2001, obviously your total factor productivity will suffer. And you will not be able to reach the growth levels prior to the crisis. For that, I think Turkey will have a recession in 2020 and very moderate growth in 2021. In that sense, I take a view opposite to World Bank and Fitch, which in the last few days said Turkey will grow by four, four and a half percent in 2021. I don't think they understand the dynamics of Turkish business or Turkish workforce. Okay, wow, it has been 20 minutes and many of you have shown the patience to listen to me. This is Attila Eşilada broadcasting at Real Turkey channel. Before I end this broadcast, I would like you to know that I have a Twitter account, Attila Eng, 
and we have a Facebook account called Real Turkey, where you can follow not only our broadcasts, but our English language postings about Turkish economy, finance, and politics as well. Once again, stay home, stay safe, and have a good day. Bye-bye.